Hello, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and today I want to go over the differences between Fruity Limiter and Fruity Soft Clipper. So I'm having a lot of issues with my video camera. It's just lagging so much. There's really no point of me having the camera up there. So, but anyway, I was really surprised that in my mastering tutorial with stock plugins that no one mentioned Soft Clipper, and I think that's a testament to the plugin chain that I showed you guys and how good it really was. Um, I know it's really popular right now for a lot of people to actually master with Fruity Soft Clipper. And today I want to actually prove that that's definitely not an issue. It's not a problem. It's actually a really good solution for uh, people that don't really know how to use the limiter. But at the same time, I think last week, I really disproved that Fruity Limiter is a bad plugin. There are reasons that I use Fruity Limiter over Fruity Soft Clipper, and I'm gonna show that to you today. So right now I have a project pulled up from uh, the beat that I posted last week. A lot of you seem to have liked it, so I'll just use this as an example. And one of the most important things that you should be doing when you're testing the difference between two sounds or two plugins is making sure that they're the same loudness. And the plugin that I'm using is also something that I introduced to you guys last week. It's Ulean Loudness Meter. And here I have my two different plugin chains. So I have Fruity Limiter going into Ulean Loudness Meter. On the second channel, I have basically just a gain pushing into Fruity Soft Clipper so that they're the same loudness. And so that I'm actually utilizing Soft Clipper at all. If I were to use this post gain knob, well then we would start clipping in the channel. You'll notice that if you just load up Fruity Soft Clipper with, with just the stock settings, you won't get clipping. It'll actually saturate anything that's going above zero dB. And then I have Ulean loudness meter at the very bottom here, where it's going to measure our loudness for us. Another thing that you'll notice in my mix bus, this is my actual mastering chain. So if you've watched my previous tutorial, you'd see Fruity uh, fruity filter on the mix bus and then this is what the, those settings look like nothing special just a little high pass basically which you would think that's cutting out all of the bass below this point but I promise you there's still bass below this area so it's not literally cutting every single frequency below this this point so again that's something that you should be using your ears with um, and then I have fruity parametric EQ with just a slight boost here here or there. And again, in the mastering tutorial, I go into detail about those boosted areas. And then I have parametric EQ. Once again, use your ears. I have a cut basically somewhere around 1700 and, and I have a cut below 27 Hertz. And again, I'm still getting some signal that's above and below these areas. So it's not literally cutting out all of those frequencies, but it's taming them. So normally I would have these two EQs on my mastering chain. When I send people the dynamic mix, I want them to use their own EQ in case they want to shape it differently or boost certain sounds and whatnot. This filter plugin is just cleaning up the mix just a little bit. So that's, this is something that I like to put on my dynamic mix no matter what, so that the mix that my clients get still sounds super clean. And then with these two EQs, I try to enhance the mix a little bit. There's definitely more than one way to skin a cat, so you don't have to use this exact chain, but it's how I'm able to get really clean mixes really fast without even thinking about it. So right here I have this gain, which is just another EQ. Nothing's boosted or anything. I'm just using the volume knob here. And I'm pushing that into Soft Clipper because without it, I would get this really low signal and Fruity Soft Clipper really wouldn't be activated to its full potential. And on top of that, the volume overall would be a lot lower than the volume that I'm getting in Fruity Limiter. So to prove to you that these are the same level, I'm going to go ahead and loop this starting with the Fruity Limiter chain. And this is the meter for that right here on the left. So it's about negative 11, give or take 0.1 or 0.2 
LUFS. And let's go ahead and test out the soft clipper chain. So this one came out to negative 10.9, so it's just a 0.1 difference. It really just depends on where I actually stop playing and where I loop it from, but both of these were bouncing above and below negative 11. So these are virtually the same uh, level of loudness. So yeah, there's not really a difference in volume. And you might even say to yourself, there's not really a difference in sound. So you really could use either either plugin, but there might be a handful of you that do notice a slight difference, and I'm about to point that out right now. I'll go ahead and play Fruity Soft Clipper first, and then I'm gonna play Fruity Limiter, and I want you to pay attention to the high end and the low end, and the differences between the two. Now again, if you don't hear a difference, no big deal. It's very negligible. But overall, the difference that I'm hearing is that the Fruity Soft Clipper is doing its job in terms of soft clipping. So when you start soft clipping a sound, all of the sounds that are going above the threshold that is set here is going to get saturated. And sure enough, I'm doing some saturation here, but the saturation that I'm getting from the soft clipper, it's adding upper harmonics. The problem that I have with that is I went through all of this work of, which isn't a lot of work, but I went through the process of adding these two EQs and this filter, and I dialed in the exact sound that I wanted. And what you'll notice is that as soon as you slap on a soft clipper, those balances are slightly shifted. So I'm getting a little bit more of a high end sound that's being highlighted versus the low end versus with the Fruity Limiter where even with this slight bit of saturation that I'm adding in, I'm getting more of a transparent sound. It's more, I'm getting more of the sound that I was expecting to get with the EQs that I added here with my Fruity Limiter. So one thing that you could do to avoid that problem or if you even think that it's a problem is throwing on your soft clipper first and that's what everyone is teaching you guys which is a very good thing basically what they'll do is throw on a soft clipper before they get into mixing and they'll just mix from there that way you could balance everything out have your eqs exactly the way that you want and when you finish your mix it's going to sound exactly how you wanted it to sound. When I add effects, add distortion, add saturation, add EQ to these individual channels and or these buses, I want, I, I did it for a reason. I wanna keep that exact balance. I wanna keep those exact sounds. If I just go back and forth really quick between the two, I think you'll notice that there is just a little more harmonics in the high end versus this just sounds more like there's an even response across the board with the high end, the mids, and the lows. Again, I think that's more of a result of me adding this soft clipper after the fact that I've already balanced everything and added effects. In order to fix that issue, all you would have to do is just add in soft clipper first and then go in and mix everything. And that way you'll actually get the balance that you wanted and keep everything consistent with, with what you want to hear. Which also reminds me uh, why Fruity Limiter was considered such a awful plugin. And it's because for whatever reason, ImageLine decided to have Fruity Limiter on the master by default. And what that ends up doing is limiting everything without giving you this nice saturation that you would get from Fruity Soft Clipper. And whenever you would boost something like a kick into this Fruity Limiter, it's going to limit 
that sound heavily. And basically what that does, once you start adding sound after sound after sound, it just sounds like a mess. That's literally where Fruity Limiter got its bad reputation. It's because of it being on the master channel without people even realizing what it's doing, why it's there, and causing terrible mixes because people are driving these signals into a limiter right from the get-go. So I don't recommend using Fruity Limiter on your master or on your mix bus, whatever, before you start mixing. Think of Fruity Limiter as a plugin that you add to just make things louder while keeping the balance that you created. So it's more of a plugin that's meant for transparency, uh, a plugin that's literally just there to make things louder after you've already balanced everything. While so Soft Clipper is a plugin that isn't as transparent, but you could still get some transparency out of it if you add it on first, which is the opposite of Fruity Limiter. So that's really the point of this tutorial, which is to use Fruity Limiter at the end of your mixing versus a uh, soft clipper where I would use this at the beginning of my mixing. So that way, in both cases, you'll get a more transparent mix. If you throw a limiter on before you start mixing, your mix isn't going to be transparent at all. It's going to do all kinds of funky, wonky things that you're not going to be happy with versus soft clipper. If you do all this cool stuff to all of your individual channels and buses, it might throw that balance off if you throw on Soft Clipper at the end. So really think of these two plugins as the opposite of each other in terms of how you would use them. One thing that I forgot to mention, everyone uh, pretty much just uses the stock setting on Soft Clipper. So I just pulled up the default uh, Fruity Soft Clipper and sure enough, everything is identical, even though I did move this stuff around earlier and I ended up with the default settings. So that really tells you how good this default setting really is. So that should give you a peace of mind right there. So me just going in blind and literally uh, adjusting these knobs to match up uh, with the with the best sound that I could possibly get out of this soft clipper, I ended up with the default setting. So that should give you some peace of mind in terms of how good that default setting really is. I would just use that default setting 100% of the time. I would not change those knobs. If I were using this on an individual channel or a bus, what I would do is lower the threshold so that I'm getting the saturation that I'm looking for and then increase that post knob so that you could hear what's actually going on with that saturation. Because the lower you lower this threshold, the quieter the sound is going to get but increase that post knob to uh, get that level back and you'll hear all the nice saturation that you got out of it. But yeah, sorry I couldn't have the camera up. Uh, I know some of you don't even care, which is a good thing. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or just general comments. Thanks again. Peace.